Welcome back to What's Your Real. Today we sat down with Chad and Tyler from Punch Parade. You may know them as Mass Anthem from their two top songs, Good Life and Never Knew. It was an awesome conversation. We talked about them as kids, their time being the band Mass Anthem, but also changing their name and starting a whole new band uh, named Punch Parade and what that means for them in the future. I think you guys are gonna like this one. So let's sit down with Chad and Tyler. Chad and Tyler, what's going on? Thank you for doing this. Yeah, man, we're excited to be here. So we're gonna point out the obvious. We are recording this in April, the end of April. So stay home, stay safe, right? So we're all doing this over Zoom. This is our first try doing a podcast that isn't like in person. I hope it goes really well. Um, you know, it's, hey, this is a first time for us too. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens, but it's cool. What's neat is you guys are in Nashville, right? You're still in Nashville. Yep. Which is dope because we can actually do this um, because obviously we're in Vermont. I was hoping, I still want you guys to get up here at some point. Um, Dude, yeah, man, we gotta come do a to show Vermont. Or something, we've we've but... actually never been to Vermont. We've been to like, you know, the East Coast. We've been to New Hampshire and Boston and uh, kind of around that area, but we've never been to Vermont. So hopefully we can get there soon. Yeah, well, Vermont's awesome. There's more cows than people, and there's no Chick-fil-A. So, <laughs> there you have it. Sounds <laughs> lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway. So, guys, yeah. I mean, we want to talk about your story. Um, we want to hear about you guys. We want to learn about you guys. You guys are all obviously a part... Well, I guess at the time when this comes out, you were a part of Mass Anthem. You did start Mass Anthem. Um, but, you know, let's start from the beginning. What... Uh, where'd you guys grow up? You guys are brothers, all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, my name's Chad. This is my older brother, Tyler. And we grew up in like central Illinois uh, for like the better part of our years. Like the, the um, I don't know, to, through high school, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And then when we, uh, Tyler went to college and then I went to college, we went to separate universities and like our passion for music really grew there to uh, something that was a little bit more serious. When we were growing up, our dad was a worship pastor, and so we were around music our entire lives. Our sister sang, our mom played piano, dad sang and played guitar, and so my brothers, I mean, you started playing drums at like age 11 or 12, and I started playing guitar and saxophone and those kind of things, and um, and so like sooner, like sooner or later, we were all on the praise team at our church. Uh, when we were in like late middle school, early high school. And um, and that's really where like the passion of music began. We just fell in love with, with music and, and the art of creating and, you know, coming up with something that, you know, some, somebody's never heard before, just so many things and different instruments and things like that. And then um, we went to college and really like grew our craft that way. Um, and that's when we started Mass Anthem. We started Mass Anthem in 2014. And Tyler, you were a senior, right? Um, yeah, I was, a, I was a senior in college. And uh, we started as like a university like ministry team, I guess you could say. Um, you know, we had an album that was sponsored by the university and we would play different schools and camps and stuff um, and basically promote the university. And that's kind of, yeah, that's that's basically how we started in 2014. Yeah, and we played camps and churches and retreats and literally anything we would say yes to, whether there would be five people there for like a campus event or 300. So we were just trying to play as much as possible. And that's, it kind of grew from a like university kind of, like not not scholarship based but like recruitment based like hey come you know so we would go play and we'd be like hey come to judson university this is a great place to learn music and record in the studios etc like it grew from that into like wait like i think i actually want to do a band as like a career like full time i was studying worship arts as my major and um, just was kind of growing more into like, I, I really like the performing side of music and, and like the entertainment side of music rather than like leading the church. Um, so that's kind of where my passion grew from there. And then we moved to Nashville uh, in 2016 after I graduated and we've been pursuing the music dream ever since. Dang, well, you powered right through that, didn't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so 
let's 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 talk about mass anthem for a second yeah um where i mean where did that begin was joey a part of it from the start um who is joey you know where did he come from yeah all that good stuff yeah so it was okay so it's funny so mass anthem originated my uh sophomore year my sophomore year 2014 and it was me tyler and two other guys that y'all don't even know like just these guys that we met in college and um joey didn't enter the picture until 2015 and 16 uh that like year and so he came in as a freshman and for a while it had just been tyler and i because the two guys who were with us um at the very very beginning they had left to do other things like one of them became a worship leader at a church full time and that's like where his heart was and the other one wanted to run sound for other bands and so that was our bass player and so he started doing that and so it was four of us at the start doing the camps and then it came down to just tyler and i and whenever we would play a camp or a show we would just like invite a guitar player so that there'd be three of us um like during that season and i remember like praying for a guitar player um that we because we like as a band like we like to have the same members in it because you can grow in camaraderie like community like it's just a lot more fun when you have the same people in it and so joey came in as a freshman when i was a senior and he played a guitar solo at the talent show and he literally like melted our faces off and i was like dude this is the guy that like we've been praying for that we've been looking for and i remember i just like sent him a message on facebook it was like yo dude you're you know you you're okay at guitar you're not the best like we can work with you kind of thing <laughs> no. i was like dude you're awesome we would love to like just like have you for a couple shows and so we just tried him out because the most important thing to us as a band is like making sure that like anybody we bring on the road with us is a good hang and if if you're fun to be around because like the smallest part of playing music together is actually playing music like the most time that you spend together is like actually hanging out or sleeping in the same hotel room or getting ready in the morning or just it's like all of the in-between stuff Mm -hmm. um and so it's super important for like us to be able to get along with the people who are, we're on the road with and joey was like the chillest of guys like so easy to be around super fun um and so yeah so then it was just us three for maybe a year maybe two years two, year two. two years um and then yeah we moved to nashville and joey's still up in chicago um so yeah that's that's how we met him so wait remind me again how old were you when this all happened you said 2014. Yeah, I was a senior whatever. in college, so I was 21, 22 years old. And Joey was coming in as a freshman. And we had, like, you know, done the band thing for a couple of years, so we, like, had the camps and retreats things down. But then it wasn't until we moved to Nashville when I was 22 where, like, we really got a taste of, like, what the actual industry is like as far as, like, a career goes. Um, so it was completely different in that aspect. So you were bouncing around to a whole bunch of different uh, camps and retreats and all different kinds of venues with a different guitar player thrown in here, there, and everywhere. Did you call yourself Mass Anthem that whole time? Yeah. So we kind of treated it like um, almost like a freaking country thing where the brand of Mass Anthem stayed the same where like the brand was just Tyler and I. Um, and then like when you would come see us at a show or like at a camp or retreat, we would have different people with us, but it would like be the same music. And so, um, yeah, kind of like for King country, it's the brothers and then they have a bunch of other guys and, and, uh, and, and the thing is like, um, it's hard for fans or for the audience to catch on or like stay on the journey with you if you're constantly changing like who you are visually. And so we wanted to like, keep something that was consistent for them um and so like even like nowadays we have five guys in our band total and sometimes we'll bring out a sixth just because we love to play with a bunch of guys on stage but we try to keep it the same as much as we can now whenever you set out and start a mass anthem what 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 was the goal you know were you like oh i want to do music full-time or you like i want to go play music 
Um, yeah, the goal was to do it full time. Um, moving to Nashville, uh, you know, a lot of artists moved to Nashville to live the dream. Um, you know, I'm going to Nashville to make a name for myself and that's totally a real thing. Um, but it's also totally, uh, I don't, I don't want to say a pipe dream, but it just, it just takes <laughs> a ton of work and you, you realize just how much music is also a business. Um, and so Mass Anthem, we, we've been label shopping, um, all the way up until last summer. So for, gosh, almost four years, or I guess three years, um, three years, we, we tried to, you know, get signed to a Christian label and, you know, that's kind of how you have to do it in the, at least in the Christian world, you, you sign with a label, you get a radio team and then, uh, you get a manager and then they put you on a tour and you get a song on K-Love and that's kind of the direction you go. So for a really long time, that was like, hey, that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for, um, you know, Christian radio. We want to be the next Mercy Me. We want to be, you know, the one of these big bands on, on K-Love. Um, and really, uh, we came to a point where we realized that uh, that wasn't as at all who we were. Um, we were trying to fit into a box that um that we didn't we didn't want um we were trying to trying to be somebody that we were not and which was totally against everything music that we wanted to be music is all about expressing yourself and and being who you are and we got to the point last summer where we realized like this is we're like people are wanting us to be what we're not um and so we've we've since made a, a major transition yeah like um music was always so much fun to play and but we quickly made it into like okay like this is a passion of ours but we want it to be a career and like tyler said like for it to be a career it is business driven it is business focused and uh, like we knew so many people and we had you know we were the guys who like had the side jobs like working in retail or working in the service industry you know where it's like oh i do this but i'm also in a band like on the side and we did not want the band to be on the side we wanted like a different job like ubering or you know again working in retail to be the side thing and so like we knew like v- as soon as we moved to Nashville, like that was like the turning point of like, all right, this is, this is business focused. This is going to be a career for us. We're going to do whatever we can to make this happen. Um, if that means living on a lot less dollars, then so be it so that we can like go do what we love to do. And then, yeah, I was like through that journey where we like, we're slowly transitioning to like, you know, finding who we are out, who we are finding our voice and like how we want to express ourselves and who our fan base is and the kind of music we want to create. That is like just a really long journey of like figuring out like who likes our music who who do we want to listen to our music that kind of thing so where did you live again before nashville so we lived in springfield illinois that's where we grew up and then we both went to colleges in like the chicago land area so like we so before we moved to nashville we were like chicago land so we went from chicago to nashville and um and like tyra said like yeah like so many people move to nashville to pursue music um and and for us it was like turning that like dream that had like when we were in college music was like a dream and like man i would like to do this someday and then moving to nashville was like the turning point of like okay like are we gonna make this a dream or are we gonna like make this a reality and so like that's still today like right now what we're working on what we're trying to do yeah i feel like nashville is one of those places like for us you know for us filmmakers it's like oh you moved to hollywood or you moved to la or whatever um now one thing that i've learned you know i've had the opportunity to go to la and you know like atlanta is on the come up for filmmaking on all this stuff um, and I went there and I was kind of like, well, this is not the scene that I want to be in. This is not the scene that I was looking for, you know? And it's like Nashville for music, from my outsider's perspective, I'm not that much in the music realm, but, um, Nashville is that spot. Now, is it true that there, that is like where the opportunity is and do you need to be there? Um, it's so I'm a firm believer that you can be successful where ever you are geographically however like taking the steps to like make that journey easier on 
easier on you is like totally a viable option, which moving to Nashville was a huge reason of that because I was co-writing with a ton of writers and they all live in Nashville. So rather it being an eight hour drive or, you know, a flight, I could just drive 20 minutes to their house and I could write so much more um, with again, like bigger circles of writers. And, you know, for music, especially like Christian music, like songwriting was where it was at. Like it was the song that was going to get you the record label. It was the song that was going to get you the booking agency and the management. And so for us, like moving to Nashville was, was made the, made it a lot easier to like pursue that dream. Um, I will say like now that we're, we've pursued CCM for about five to six years and we're kind of uh, turning the direction, which I'm sure we'll get into in a little bit. Um, but we're, we're starting to pursue mainstream, just general pop music. Um, and so like, as far as like geographically speaking, I don't know, like if Nashville is the right place for us, but we've, you know, developed really strong roots here and, and people who believe in us and people who write Christian music and pop music, country music and pop music all over the place. And so we, we have our, our circle here now that they're you know wanting to work with us and write for us and so yeah like that's um i I think it's important to relocate just to give yourself the best chances and uh in in what you want to do um and you know the best opportunity possible so yeah i would agree with that i would say you don't have to um you know if you want to do music like you don't have to move to nashville but i would strongly recommend it um if you want to take it seriously as a career just for like for everything that chad said um it's the industry is here the people are here the engineers are here the the writers the record labels like no matter how you want to do music um the connections for you to be able to do it and do it well is in nashville or la depending on on what you want to do did you guys study music in college or something else uh no i actually went to school for business so i have a business administration degree and i i studied worship arts so like i mean for worship arts i want to say like 30 percent of it was music and the other 70 was like theology and and the studies of church and things like that so we actually like neither of us went to to school for like music business or the industry joey our guitar player our third guy he went to school for uh music business and we have a keyboard player now his name's jason and he also went for music business i think if we could go back if we knew like i didn't know i wanted to be in band until after i was i had two months left of school if i could go back i for sure wouldn't go to school because <laughs> You know, there's just so much that you can learn, especially with music. Like, you kind of just have to do it. Um, you, you you almost can't learn in school, um, you know, and I think that's like that for a lot of jobs, which is would be a totally different soapbox for me to get on. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think... I mean, school definitely helped us in some way, but as far as like furthering our careers or being better musicians, like school just... College just wasn't, um, you know... I, I don't think it was at all necessary. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question. Um, because, you know, obviously I didn't go to school. I didn't go for, to school for film or whatever. I'm out here trying to figure it out. And what I found interesting is a lot of people go to music school or film school or whatever for the connections. And, and you guys moved to Nashville for the connections. And I guess my question is, you say you wish you hadn't gone to school, but do you think... Um, it's about the school you go to or would you have just moved to Nashville sooner? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I was reading something this morning that was talking about succeeding and and failing and that like, you know, any CEO or any like huge top business leader has simply just failed more than you and I have like to get to like where they are. Like success is literally built on a number of failures and it's hard to like answer the question of like, would I do it differently if I could do it over? But I will say that like, if success is about like failing more, I wish I would have given myself more time to like fail in, in the area, which that could like propel me a little bit further. And school was great, but like there are like, you know, you know, like in college you have to do gen eds. Like I don't, it, it, 
it doesn't matter about gen eds. I've been taking English classes since I was six years old. I don't need to take another English class, right? So it's like those kind of things. I, I <laughs> really wish that like, yeah, I would have I would have moved to Nashville a little bit earlier because again, like you're building relationships that you're going to have for a really long time. Whereas like in college, most of the relationships you build, you just have in that short period of time. And then you're, you all like move on to your own thing. And so, yeah, I, I, I think it's important to, okay, let me say this. So I, I think there are, there are two, two options that like, if you know what you want to do 100%, don't go to school if it doesn't require school, right? So like if it's a creative arts thing, you're like, yeah, I wanna be in a band. Yeah, I wanna do video. Yeah, I wanna do musical theater. Go, go do it. Like be that 18 year old, be that 19 year old who, or 20 year old who's been living in New York for the last two years and knows how everything works, right? Rather than the person who's been sitting in the classroom studying about it, just go do it. Um, and then the other thing is if, if you have no idea what you want to do, if you're like, I don't know if I want to work in the church or if I want to be in a band. Yeah. Maybe go to school for a year, maybe go for two, get your, get your associates, you know? Um, and then when you know, go go do it. I feel like there's just this weird stigma of like, well, you know, when you graduate high school, go to college, get your four-year degree. And I think the millennial generation and the genera generation below us is really figuring out that like, you know, I just don't think it's very necessary anymore. It's about re like, this whole thing is about relationships and your people skills. And like, can you show up and do a job well? Like if I can do those things where like I can be kind to people and like work really hard, like I don't need a degree to show for it. So did you guys move to Nashville with any connections at all? Or did you just go buy an apartment and figure it out? I, I, I had written with two people in Nashville and <laughs> we, that's all we had. So we moved in the fall of 2016. We got an apartment. Um, we split it with another guy. So it was me, Tyler, another guy splitting rent three ways. I got a job selling women's shoes at Nordstrom to pay the bills. <laughs> yep. Yep. And Tyler, you were working at H&M. H &M, yeah. And um, literally just started emailing people uh, that I had already written with and be like, hey, do you know other writers that I could write with? Um, you know, just grow in that way because you can be a songwriter um, and you, you can be have written songs for the last five years, but until you get in a room with somebody else and like share your song idea when it's not, finished or when it's not perfected in the way that you think it is, it's a super vulnerable thing. And so it's just so new to get in the song with one person, another, per maybe three people in the room and like sharing songs and writing that way, sharing your ideas that could be really bad, that could be really good. Um, yeah. So we literally just like packed up and moved everything. We had no conversations with labels or management or we had pretty much nothing. We we're like, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna go all in, and uh, yeah, we we jumped in f head first <laughs> and landed on our head at first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sounds terrifying. It sounds terrifying to do that. But yeah. Respect. Yeah, it, it was. Um, but you know, we had a lot of it was. This is gonna sound cheesy, but like we had each other. Um, I think it would have been a lot harder if I was like a singer songwriter solo artist and trying to do it myself like at least for us like we had somebody to talk to about it somebody to um, just somebody to lean on um, and that, I think that was that was huge in getting us from the point where we were on our head to like standing up on our feet and and trying to make something of ourselves hundred percent like if I have a bad day Tyler's usually having a good one and vice versa. So it's like, man, I'm, you know, super sad or depressed about the situation or like, I feel like, you know, we've just been turning our wheels for five years and nothing's happening. The other person is usually there. So it's always so good to have like somebody to talk to about that. If either of us are both having a bad day at the same time, something, something bad's going to happen. I don't know what, but yeah, Darn. something bad. <laughs> obviously you guys want to be full-time musicians are you full-time now and if you're not what is it that you're doing to to pay the rent yeah yeah we're full-time now um so we've built up uh our spotify to a certain level where we can 
um, go on like some kind of salary. Like when I say salary, I just mean like we get a certain amount every single month. I don't mean like we're on salary with benefits. That's not what I mean. (laughs) Um, and so, yeah, we built up our Spotify so to that we can do that. And then it also covers like our monthly expenses, like, you know, van insurance and storage and, and things like that. Um, which is, a huge, huge blessing. Uh, if there are months where we don't have any shows, like we'll pick up side jobs here and there. Um, but yeah, so that's a huge blessing. That's awesome. (laughs) Now, not everybody in the band is that way, right? But you two are. Yeah. So Tyler and I are the owners. So we take all the risk. Um, but we are also the first to be rewarded. <laughs> I don't. I don't know like a nice way to say that, but that's just the truth. Um, well, if the band flops, we are the first to die. Yeah. So if the band right. succeeds, we're the first to live. And yeah. yeah. Right. So um, what are the what are the other guys doing? So the other guys are actually the so. Todd and I are the only ones in Nashville. Well, our our drummer is in Nashville too. Um, he he runs like a online drumming clinic um that's like his main thing and then he drums with us on the side um and then our two other guys up like in chicago wisconsin area and they're both worship leaders at church so like that's like their main source of income which is actually really nice that they have that right now so that the band doesn't have to like take care of them full time um we don't need that responsibility quite yet um, but the, the goal is for them in 2020 to move down to Nashville and, you know, for them to be doing this full time too. Um, but yeah, so that's actually pretty nice. I'm, right I'm on. really curious about this. Uh, how do you guys like practice and write music when, when you guys are several States away? Are you just like zoom call drumming or what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, uh, so we have this I have this philosophy about like practicing and rehearsing is that like practicing is on your own time so like I'll, I'll write a song well Tyler and I will produce it here well with our you know engineer or whatever and then we'll send it to the band guys be like hey this is the next song or you know we'll have them listen through the entire album that we released in o- last October and say hey practice your parts so that you know everything like to every single song coming in and then when we rehearse together then that's just like a run through of like you know what what can we do here in this part of the show that would be a cool moment that people will remember um so it's really just like rehearsing is like a run through and so they'll practice their parts at home and then we'll have our guys up north travel down for just a couple days and we'll rent out a like a big studio live room space for a couple days and we'll just work for like 10 hours per day on our live show and making sure that we know exactly what's going on. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wondered what, uh, what, what the process looks for you guys. So whenever I went on tour with you guys up to wherever the heck we went, um, you were listening to stuff that your producer, oh, I don't know what you want to call him made for you. And then you write over it? Yeah, uh, pretty much. So our producer, um, it, basically, he just builds tracks all the time, every day. Um, just gets inspiration from pop songs that he hears. He makes just killer tracks. And then we choose our favorites, and we write over them. And uh, just hope that we come up with some magic. Mm. Yeah, I've learned that. Um, releasing pop music it's important to be releasing just all the time frequently Um, and just uh, that's just side rant real quick just because of where music is going you know like it used to be about albums now a lot of it's just all about singles Um, and so like releasing music I've learned that like if I if I start a song completely by myself like on the guitar piano and I send it to my track guy it's going to take a lot longer for him to like imagine where the track should be and where it should go rather than him just like one day like waking up and building a song literally from start to finish just without lyrics and like a melody and he sends it to me and you know most of the time I love the track like I really vibe off of it and so like what he sends me I just like start hearing melodies right away and like Hmm. some cool like lyric ideas and so this building of a song is so much faster that way because he's just gotten to build the song from start to finish all I have to do is write over it and then I can just you know we can come up with 10 different revisions to the same track which is like super convenient too 
That's awesome. Where'd you find that guy? <laughs> we actually, you know, it's funny. We actually found him in college. <laughs> so right on. that's, that's one thing I wouldn't do over is like meeting him in college. Like he's been our producer since day one and he's grown with us too. So it's been rad. Is that what he does? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's super cool. And there's some parallels there with video uh, as far as you talked about going from an album release versus singles release and just kind of always creating content. Yep. I feel like that's kind of the way video is right now. Also, it's just like you've got to always constantly be putting stuff out there yeah. and, and keep building up those experiences. Totally. Because like you can release, you know, a full album right and like most people listen to three or four songs and once they find a song that they like dude that song is on repeat for them and they most of the time they won't listen to the rest because they they they're comfortable they found a song or whatever and then ariana grande or ed sheeran or justin bieber comes out with a single the next week and the week after and the week after and those people who are listening to your songs don't care anymore because they're listening to somebody else and that's totally fine that's just how it is now so it's like rather than us releasing 10 songs and only a couple of them being listened to let's release just one song and that way we're on people's rotation for like a month and then people forget about us and then two weeks later we release another song so yeah i'm sure it's like you know generally the same way for video it's just like it's about like consistently pumping out content you know because if you're scrolling on facebook you're gonna most likely finish watching a 30 second video rather than watching a 10 minute video it's like it's kind of the same way of like keeping people's retention spans and like just keep kind of keeping them in a rotation of like oh so and so is coming out with another you know single cool it's only three minutes i don't have to listen to 40 minutes of an album i can just listen to the song and like it or not that's interesting how you equate uh attention spans to albums versus singles because i was just thinking about that (laughs) because i'm like if you make a a video longer than you know 10 minutes it's done nobody's going to click on it nobody wants to see that anymore um which is interesting because i i I don't know i wonder how long movies are going to last but um i'm going to jump back just for a second um because i meant to ask this earlier but who do you guys look at as these guys are doing it really well as far as pop music judah and the lion we love um really yeah their whole um persona of of like who they are and like the way they treat their live show um and well, okay this is funny like i admire people by the music they create and the people who they are judah and the lion i don't listen to a lot I'm not saying I don't like their music. I think their music is awesome, but I don't listen to it like all the time. Um, But when I I look to them, when it comes to like who they are as people and how they run things in their live show and like just the integrity of like that kind of group. And then I have bands or like artists where it's like um, chain smokers, like they're constantly putting something out. Like it's, they just do singles now. So it's like the way that they're putting out content is like super inspiring. Um, and the way they do things like featuring with other artists, we would love to do that. Like just again, building the connections that way. Um, so yeah, it's like listening to people's music as inspiration. It's like, okay, I love what they're doing. And then like seeing how they're running their social media or like how they're touring and things like that. You've done some really cool, uh, mashups of different pop songs uh do you find that as kind of like uh featuring with somebody else like does that get a lot of attention uh on those songs uh you know we actually started doing the mashups um because we were in between uh we were in between albums and we were like i think we were talking to labels and trying to figure out like what's what's next and um we wanted to start doing mashups because one they're easy they're like super easy. <laughs> um, and two people love to listen to a rendition of a song that they've heard before, but it's totally different. And um, I, th- you know, I think uh, like American Idol, I think really started that um, with like people doing covers of songs and then all of a sudden YouTube came along and, and now YouTube has made the cover thing like explode and it's still exploding. Um, and so we really just jumped on that train and like, let's just, let's just put together some of our favorite songs. Um, and uh, actually, as Mass Anthem now, we're going to continue to do covers. Um, we're working on a new cover album right now, actually, uh, that is kind of a secret, but it'll come out in May. So 
by the time this podcast comes out, it won't be too much longer. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, we, yeah, we enjoy it. And, um, and yeah, we, uh, you know, it, it, it is cool to, to listen to songs that like we love and try to do them differently or try to put that with a song that we, uh, you know, another song that we love. Um, so yeah, we really enjoy that. So I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, but <laughs> wasn't your first track on Spotify to hit a million was a mashup, right? Yeah. Yep. Our first track to hit a million was a mashup and, uh, that mashup is still doing a uh, crazy good. It's, it's just wild. <laughs> um, and it's been released, uh, two years ago, actually. It's, and as of this recording, it was almost two years exactly. And uh, I think it's close to 3 million or maybe hit 3 million. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. I, I sometimes I wish that that was an original song because it's like, hey, that's a song that we like, <laughs> we wrote. But you know, it's still cool. Like, oh, people like are connecting with this song um, that we you know kind of created. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what that was like. To um, I mean, now that I, it, you have originals that have surpassed those, right? Yeah, yeah, we have a couple originals um, that. Uh, we released as singles right before we released our, our album and they just kind of exploded randomly. We, we really had nothing to do with it. Um, we get a lot of messages of people like, wait, how did, how did this happen? And we're like, I don't know. It's just really cool. Um, and yeah, that, that's been like super cool, especially on Spotify to have like, to see our mashups do so well to where we're like, Oh my goodness. Like I'd never thought a song would do this good. And then to have, original songs surpassed that was like when it first happened like we literally you texted me and you you sent me like a voice voice text and he was like dude look at good life like look at our single like look at this song and we were like on cloud nine for the whole day and it's it's super cool to like to actually like see that like a song that we wrote is being you know i think it it's got almost three million streams and like nine months so it's it's it hasn't been out for too long so it's it's doing pretty well when you put out a mashup and it does so well i almost i, I was just kind of almost wondering is that like a confidence booster or are you like oh i did at the time where you like <laughs> i wish that was an original um obviously it worked out in the end but <laughs> yeah as as an artist you always wish it's an original because it 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 doesn't really do anything for you um, coming from like the artist, like creating perspective, because there, there's a difference between like reimagining something like covering a song and like creating something out of a place where you felt like you needed to write this song. And it's like your personal story. And then it like kind of blows up and people start to hear it. So like it was cool. It seeing a mashup explode was a completely different feeling of like accomplishment it was like wow like this is cool like people are listening to us like to our voices right that's kind of what it was like people are hearing us sing and then when an original blows up it's like whoa like people are hearing our story and like hearing who we are and that's just a way better feeling in my opinion yeah that's neat that's cool um i was there in the tour bus yeah when when the spot of when happy hits happened uh-huh which is awesome dude and that was that was, that a, was, that was a such a cool moment I, I obviously i think it was a turning point but can you like speak into that at all was it a turning point oh dude absolutely okay so like we had had one song that was doing well one original song before that moment and in one sense it could be like things are looking up but I'm more of like a skeptic and I was like, it's a fluke. Like this song, you know, is just doing well and whatever the second song. So when you're on the tour bus, when, you know, it's, it's Friday. So like, that's when like songs are being added to playlists. And I was just looking at playlists, but I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I had, I, I had forgotten it was Friday and I was just scrolling through playlists and I saw our song on that happy hits. And I looked and I was like, is that, wait, and like in my head, I'm like processing like, wait, is that our song? Wait, that is our song. Wait, what? What day is it? And I realized it's Friday. Wait, was our song just added? And that's just kind of like when I freaked out that like, whoa, like not, not only was it just one song, but it's two songs. So like things are like actually like catching on and people are really liking our music and listening to our music. And dude, that 
I I watch that video sometimes that you made for us of just that little moment to like post on our story just because it brings me back that feeling of like five years of working really hard led up to like that moment and it was like oh it was really cool yeah that's awesome dude it was, you guys went freaking nuts. <laughs> it was yeah, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and, I, and I, I feel bad saying this, but at the time I was like, what the heck is Happy Hits? Because I wasn't on Spotify. <laughs> so yeah. I, was, I was like, what are you guys talking about? Um, but yeah, that's cool. I mean, has that helped? Uh, obviously, you just, you just kind of let out that you're working on a new project. Um, but, you know, like, what... Do you, do you have a sense of, like, that's gonna happen again or is it like um I, I obviously you don't think that was a fluke because you now have two songs on happy hits or whatever yeah so um so we're we are relaunching our band and we're actually like completely switching gears so we're coming out with a brand new band name uh in a couple weeks and it's absolutely terrified us but we know it's the right thing to do because for so long mass anthem the name was tied to christian music and if you go to our spotify you're going to see a mashup album you're going to see a christian album you're going to see like a crossover like half pop half christian album and we feel like it's not communicating a solid brand to the fans so we're actually releasing like a brand new name in a couple weeks and so I'm, I'm getting to your question, by the way. But one, we're like really scared about that because we've developed this relationship with Spotify curators under Mass Anthem where like, you know, people are starting to recognize that name. Well, what if we release an, a new song under a new band name? Are, are people going to know? Well, no, they're not going to know. So we're like starting from, you know, the bottom again which is terrifying in and of itself but what i will say is and i say this with confidence not like you know i'm i'm the stuff or whatever but that like man we know how to do one main thing which is write and record really good music and i just i just say that with confidence just because we've been doing it for a really long time we know who we are we know what we want and if you're confident in what you're doing that translates in whatever it is period like people see confidence in the work that you're creating no matter what it is and so if we can show confidence in the music that we're creating i absolutely 100 percent believe that like these songs can get unhappy hits and playlists that are bigger than happy hits it scares me that like we're releasing it under a new band name so there's not going to be that name recognition and they're not going to know we're the same people and we're literally going to start at zero monthly listeners when we have almost when we have three quarters of a million like that's super scary but we're starting this from like we've what we've learned the past six years of doing music and failing right and like just literally failing so that we succeed and failing again here is that we know how to do this better and we're starting with six years of knowledge of how to do things right and and how we've done things wrong and how we can fix those in the future and so i'm really excited for this next chapter and i'm i'm confident that you know within a year or two that we can really get this new thing like up and running you know to a point that's even bigger where mass anthem is right now so remember, by the time this podcast come out comes out, the name is released. Yeah. So you can talk about it. So what's the name? <laughs> the name is Punch Parade, and dude, we wanted to make a name that was just like would literally grab your attention so fast. And what better word than punch? Like Punch Parade, and we and we <laughs> kind of view it as like like our fans bring the parade like they bring the party like they bring the color they bring the energy they bring the charisma and we're going to bring that punch of pop music where it's like this like colorful happy pop that just like makes you like want to move want to dance want to feel want to experience and uh and you know like in one sense band names are important and in another they're completely not like the band name u2 like if you think about it that's a pretty dumb name but it's u2 right like that's the one of the most iconic bands of all time and nobody thinks twice about the band name but if we could create a band from from 
you know, day one that like has incredible brand recognition and is the same all across the board. And where it's like, when you hear that name, you know what you're expecting. Like that, like that to us excites us rather than a name that is like kind of all over the place where we've done music, you know, different genres and different things like that. So yeah, we're, we're super excited to be launching it. So you're not the first Christian band that I've worked with that has now gone mainstream pop. <laughs> yeah. Probably not even close. <laughs> it so, won't be the last. So what's the, I mean, I, I want a little bit more explanation um, for a couple reasons on, on, on why you're doing that. Um, because Christians are Christians and sometimes they'll be like, well, they don't have the faith to stay in it or whatever. Um, like, like what, what is your real reason from moving from the Christian scene to the pop scene. I know you talked about it a little bit because Christian music is like really hard to, you know, get big in. Um, but I mean, what are your thoughts? Um, oh my gosh, I have so many. But let me just like save some time if there are any younger artists out there who are doing Christian music. You got to love it. Like number one, you have to love it and we never did. And that doesn't make us less of a Christian than it does somebody who's head over heels about it. We just didn't love it. Number two, Christian music fans are like 50 years old and older. Like they're not our generation. And no matter how hard we try to like make it work, that age, they do not like the music that we were creating. If, if you're my age and you're doing Christian music, like, and, and you're doing music that they like, that's that's great, but like, for us, the music that we like and we listen to, they're not listening to. So for the longest time, we were lying to ourselves. And and thirdly, I would say that like since we want to like make regular pop music, I feel like that gives us more of a platform to like actually make a difference. And I'm not mm, okay. I don't want to like you know I'm I'm probably gonna piss people off. That's okay. Um, but like I'm saying that like it's so important to like just do what you were created to do and we just want to make music that's fun that's inclusive that anybody can listen to and we don't want our music to fall under this genre that it's like oh do you know jesus do you not know jesus well you can or can't listen to our music or it's like well you can but you're not going to get it like can we make a music that is like just fun that like you know, it encourages people that like it brings people to like a really fun, happy feeling. And then once they get to know us, like they become a fan of who we are. They see our story. They say who we are. They see what we believe in. That's a lot more important to us. And dude, I'm telling you, it took us six years to get to this decision because I felt like, well, since I grew up in the church and my dad was a worship pastor, and I do music. I have to do Christian music. Like it, it took me the longest time to realize that like, no, I can, I can actually just do music because you know, um, Christian music is the, like, that's the only career that is, that has the title of Christian. Like you don't have a plumber, sorry, um, about the lighting. You don't have a plumber who is like, Hey, you know, my name's Jeff and I plumb for Christians. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is the worst business plan you could ever possibly come up with. You're cutting your margins more than half, right? And it's like you're 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 stopping your ability to reach people who will never step foot in the church or reach people who will never turn on the Christian radio station. Like the goal is to like go out and like love on those people who like don't know who Jesus is. And I will say that like people are called to different things. Like there are artists who are called to Christian music and are called to do that. For us, we never, like we were not. And, and like, it took us a long time to realize that like, you know, Jesus loves me just the same, whether I'm doing Christian music, whether I'm doing pop music or whether I'm selling women's shoes at Nordstrom, like <laughs> it doesn't matter. So if like, I think what matters to the Lord is, is, is my child, me, am, am I enjoying the gift he's given me? And what's ironic is that when we were in Christian music, I felt trapped. I, I wasn't enjoying myself. I felt like I was stuck and I felt like I just wasn't enjoying who I was and, and, and what I was doing it for and I started to resent it. 
And I think that's the last thing that the Lord wants to happen to us is like, hey, I, I gave you this gift. It's like a father to a son. Dude, I gave you this gift. Just enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. Like if I buy you this action figure and you want to turn him into a, a Barbie or you want to make the action figure play in a different what that whatever, like this, this gift is for you. That was probably the worst analogy I could have come up with. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's so like, I just, I want to save the younger artists, anybody who might be listening to this some time and, and like, man, decide first, like, where do you want to be in 10 years? Not because of what your parents say or what your church says or what your friends say. Like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do you want to be? And it's like, wherever you want to be, like work really hard to get there because this is your life. This is your dream and your passion that was given to you by God. Right. And like, if, if you like make it about him and for us specifically, it's about going pop mainstream opening for the chain smokers being bigger than the chain smokers someday like that's the goal um and so that's the long-winded answer i guess dude super well said (laughs) that was awesome i mean i mean that was great i i I asked a question that i thought would scare you and you owned it Um, (laughs) so i mean you went from yeah i mean it's cool because mass anthem you guys i don't know what you guys would call mass anthem's biggest accomplishment accomplishment um the only one that i'm really familiar with because this is when you guys you know when we really started working together was when you guys got on the god's not dead dvd yeah um if you even remember doing that Um, (laughs) yeah i remember that that was uh... which i which i thought that was the coolest thing ever but now you're going um (laughs) to you know this whole punch parade thing and i think um what is cool is like whenever you know for backstory for people who don't know this which is probably most people um we i mean months ago now probably five six months ago um we did a little tour to make an epk for mass anthem which we may have to reconsider um (laughs) but (laughs) we're gonna do it again (laughs) time for another yeah we're gonna have to do that again um but Oh, where was I going with that? Um, oh yeah, so you guys got hired because of your covers, and then you go and rip their faces off with this pop music. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think it's awesome, but and I love that you guys are going that direction. Um, and you, you mentioned the goal was to be, you know, opening for chain smokers, but um, one of the things you guys talked about a ton um, in the tour bus was um, Lollapalooza and just giant festivals, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I mean, do you, do you guys have a timeline? Do you, you know, what, what is your goal there? Yeah. So, uh, our first, uh, single, can I share this? Yeah. First yeah. single <laughs> as punch parade is being released May 8th. Um, and from there, uh, we just signed with a manager who is, uh, mainstream and, uh, head over heels like we're heading that direction we're all on the same page we've spent um i guess the good thing about the whole like covid and quarantine thing is we've had a lot of time to uh, to basically do some office work building a brand um not having to release a bunch bunch of stuff yet because nobody's doing much of anything right now um and so we've had you know two months here to to really to really build what punch prayed what we want it to be and so that when may 8th hits we're hitting the ground running um and that yeah i mean the goal is that uh we're going to start playing clubs, mainstream shows, bars, whatever we can get, uh, starting with Nashville. Um, and then hopefully all over the country, uh, getting on tours with, with whoever. And, uh, and yeah, uh, beginning with the, the big festivals, Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo. Um, what's that big one in California? Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. Woodstock. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I mean, Coachella, Coachella, that's it. Yeah. And, yeah, just just really just really beginning to uh, to blow this thing up, and and yeah, a, a lot of the work that we put in the last six years has prepared us for what we're going to become, um, you know. And we're we're ready to to really we're super excited. Can't wait for you guys to hear the first single. And funny thing, real quick. One thing I will say is that like a huge fear of ours have been like the Christians who will you know think that we're not believers anymore because we're doing 
you know mainstream general market music and that's like you know been on our hearts of like okay so like everybody who follows us like you know we we don't want to send the wrong message that we're not believers anymore but um we played a show a couple months ago and the the church was talking to us and said oh yeah we had 21 pilots in here at our church six (laughs) months before they blew up because they were playing small youth groups and like they brag about that now whereas i think that like nowadays like like right now like the switch some people might judge like i can't believe that you guys are doing this that you're not doing christian music anymore but if we ever get to the point of 21 pilots those very same people who may judge are going to be the very same people who are going to brag and say you know i knew punch parade when they were mass anthem and i got to see him at a church and now they're doing this and so it just kind of puts it in perspective for us that like man if 21 pilots can at one point in time be playing for youth groups but still have the same heart and the same belief about who jesus is at the stage that they are now why not us that's a great example <clears throat> yeah right on so may 8th next single is being dropped uh I have a couple of thoughts around that. Uh, you're you have a little bit of uh, anxiety because you're you're kind of starting up from ground zero on a new band name, which I totally get. But on the same thing, you also mentioned that like uh, people now know music by the track and not by the album. So I think it almost doesn't matter what your brand name is or what your what your name is because. Once it gets on that playlist, boom, it's recognized, which I think is going to be super cool to like watch this next year, uh, how quick you can get either uh, those existing fans you have now will come right over to the new band or you'll you'll just create new fans. But uh, so where that that was one comment. The question I had related to that is uh, on May 8th, new single drops. What does launch day look like for releasing media these days? Yeah, so we're we're just going to switch over our handle on our Instagram to the new name from Mass Anthem to Punch Parade. We want to keep our followers. <laughs> we're like kind of close to 10,000 and we really want to have that swipe up feature, guys. I mean, let's be honest. That's like what we're all working <laughs> towards, right? So, yeah, we get it. Um, yeah, for launch date, like it's we're going to keep our, our social media platforms. And when I say social media, I basically mean Instagram. Um, like we're going to keep that fairly simple. Like we're going to be releasing a bunch of graphics like that are, are planned out for our new logos, our, our new designs and, and photos and things like that for the next single, which is called cool about it. Um, that people could probably be listening to right now. So check it out. And, uh, so yeah, we're going to be making rather than like trying to make a post every single day, trying to fit into the Instagram algorithm. We're just going to make good quality content, maybe once or twice a week because again we want people to be listening to the music we don't it's it's not about them like spending time on our social media or watching our stories like we just want to drive people to like listening to our music and that kind of thing so like as far as the release goes yeah it, it's releasing may 8th we're super stoked about that and um we're going to be releasing singles every four to six weeks for the next year how do you find clients customers fans like i'm curious about the growth a little bit so if you could explain that a little bit more for maybe somebody who's just a couple years behind you trying to get their get their feet started and then i've got one more question after that yeah if there's anybody who knows that answer just let us know (laughs) because we would like to have more of all of the above (laughs) um so Honestly, we don't know. What we've done in the past is we've just played shows and like the best way to build a fan is for them to know you personally and if they can come out to your show, then you've done it. Like you've you've got it. Like we know that when somebody comes to our show, they're going to like us for the rest of our career just because we're nice people and we, we, we take relationships seriously. As far as it translating over to social media, that's a little bit harder. Um, so in, in that regard, we just try to make the best music possible. Um, yeah, I will say, um, that so as far as like what mass anthem was we released a lot of stuff this is part of the six years of learning um that 
wasn't necessarily ready to be released, wasn't the highest quality. And with Punch Parade, one of the things that we're striving to be is that everything we release is going to look like it is completely professionally done. Um, everything, everything is gonna, like so that we're ready now that we, you know, if we have 10,000 followers on Instagram or if we have 10 million followers on Instagram, it's going to look the same no matter what. Um, so yeah, I think just the, the product that we're creating is of the highest quality. Um, and I think that people are drawn to that. And then, yeah, again, like Chad said, word of mouth, um, you know, playing shows, uh, people love, especially millennials love to discover new bands especially bands that are just brand new, like one or two songs on, on Spotify. Um, and, the, and millennials especially like, just like gravitate and attach to those bands and, and become just like crazy rabid fans. And it's just, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to that. Um, and building, building a fan base the old fashioned way, you know, um, yeah. word of mouth. If the music's good enough, it's going to grow. That's kind of our, our new motto for punch parade. So is Spotify your main source of getting content out there? Or are you pushing stuff on YouTube? Or are you trying to get radio deals? Or, yeah. Uh, um, Spotify is definitely number one because that's what we understand. Um, Spotify is the easiest to get recognized as a new band because they have so many different playlists that you can get on. Um, Apple Music is a lot tougher because you kind of have to already have that brand name. Like even Mass Anthem, like we have just a tiny following on Apple music as compared to Spotify. Um, and then, you know, everything else kind of comes secondary. Uh, we, we need to be on those platforms and look good on those platforms. But as far as trying to figure out how to grow a Pandora account and YouTube, YouTube is super tough nowadays. It's so saturated and so big. Um, it's the same with Facebook face building like a Facebook page is just so incredibly <laughs> hard because there's, 2 billion people with Facebook accounts and um, for your stuff to pop up is just, you know, there's just not much of a chance. So trying to be, trying to be really good at what we're good at. And then we also have signed with this manager because he's really good at the stuff that we're not good at, which is, um, you know, playing shows in, in mainstream areas and getting us on and, you know, getting some booking agents and things. Um, so yeah, we've really, we've really with Punch Parade surrounded ourselves with a team of people that are really good at the stuff that we're probably not so good at. Yeah, real quick, um, that does kind of bring a question to mind in the sense of, is Mass Anthem completely dead? Like that's <laughs> not your plan B, it's just gone. If you call decapitation as, as part of killing something, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, actually we're going to continue with the covers, uh, because that's just been a great like thing to do that, uh, great way to make money. Let's be honest. Um, and we've learned that like the fans that we want, which is our generation don't follow bands on Facebook. They follow bands on Instagram. So mass Anthem is going to be a band on Facebook that does covers and punch parade is going to be a band on Instagram that does really good music. Interesting. So that's really going to help you guys keep this full time. Yes. Yep. Not and, totally dropping and that as ball. And as soon as Punch Parade, you know, is up and running, hopefully a year or two from now, um, and, you know, we're doing tours and hopefully playing a bunch of shows and the music is starting to build a fan base, we'll stop doing the, the mass anthem, the covers and stuff. The covers is really just to give us something to do in a transition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right on. So I have one more question. Cool. And that is... Chad, you just bought a van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> and are you, you so you're you're you just stripped out a van. You're going to live in it. Heck yeah, dude. We're going to live in it. Um my wife and I are obsessed with van life. If you don't know what van life is, just google it. It's amazing. We No, tell us about it. Tell us about it. Yeah, we just I mean me and my wife have loved tiny living f for as long as we've known each other. And so we did, we moved into an RV and renovated that a couple years ago. And we realized how hard it is to travel with an RV. And, and we looked up van life and saw that like, man, people were living in these vans. And when I say they're living in a van, I mean like 
a sprinter van, like high roof where you can stand up in it. They literally build a shower, a bed, a kitchen, a seating area, everything that you need to like live like really comfortably. And these people are living in these vans and driving and like seeing the country, seeing different other countries, like driving up to the beach and sleeping there for a couple of days and going up to the mountains. And we just love the nomadic life we style where you just go wherever you want to go and 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 see beautiful things around and so yeah so we during this whole coronavirus um like everything got canceled and i'm the type of person where i'm like i have to be doing something every single day and i'm literally gonna die if i don't have something to do and we're like well i mean now is the better time than ever so we bought a van and we're gonna convert it in 30 days and we're gonna drive to the beach immediately once it's done (laughs) (laughs) Are you vlogging it? Are you doing anything? I know you're doing stuff on Instagram. So I'm doing stuff on my Instagram stories, um, but I also am vlogging the entire thing. Um, But I'm doing mostly like time lapses um, just because, you know, we we watch van life videos on YouTube all the time, hours and hours of people doing it. And um, I just like the time lapse style of people doing like a van build. So the first vlog we're going to release is like, uh, you know, 30 day van build in 30 minutes or whatever. And so I'm just literally making one video from, start day one to day 30 um and then in between i'm like posting on on my stories so yeah so am i hearing that you're gonna be like a vlogger now and a van life (laughs) vlogger um that question was asked by a legitimate videographer and so (laughs) that's really hard to answer (laughs) when you're asking it um i'm gonna be talking to the selfie of my phone and making vlogs that way if you want to call it a vlog that's fair but like i don't think it's a vlog in your terms but i will be doing more like actually like lifestyle stuff so yeah (laughs) did you guys ever see the vlog that we made when i went to nashville no i don't think so uh uh-uh. oh uh, I, I then i never sent it to you dude I send, send us a link you. bro you'll you'll love it anyway guys thank you so much for doing this dude I'm yeah so this is this has been a lot of fun yeah dude and hopefully i'm looking forward to the next time that you two are on because you'll be in person and you'll be in vermont yeah, um, yeah bro. with all of the cows and no chick-fil-a <laughs> <laughs> love it man thanks guys i really appreciate it yeah, it's fun for having us, guys. Guys, a lot of fun all right peace out peace see ya